Now to the Holy Spirit, let us pray. For true faith most needed on our way. Nun bitten wir is the name of the tune that Priscilla just played, a variation from a hymn by Martin Luther and by another German theologian of Luther's day, Johann Walter. The next verse says, O sweetest love, your grace on us bestow. Set our hearts with sacred fire aglow, that with hearts united we love each other, every stranger, sister, and brother. Lord, have mercy. And then the hymn concludes, Shine in our hearts, O Spirit, precious light, that we, Jesus Christ, may know our right. Clinging to our Savior, whose blood has bought us, who to our true homeland has brought us. Lord, have mercy. It's from the prayer section of our hymnal. It sounded a whole lot better when Priscilla played it rather than when I read it. But the words are as beautiful and sweet as always as well. So welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. I'm glad that you have joined us this day for worship in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we hear about Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan River. Remembering Jesus' baptism prompts us to remember our own. Just as Jesus was named and claimed and sent forth as God's beloved child, we too are the beloved of God and called to be his children in the world today. The Bible verse, always proclaimed at baptisms, encourages us as God's beloved to let our lights so shine before others that they may see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Thank you, people of St. Mark's for the many ways in which you continue to shine forth the light of Christ, even, even in these challenging times. Thank you for being a family of faith that is beloved of God. And at the end of the service and the sacrament of holy baptism, we proclaim these words. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For that promise, we give great thanks to God. And baptism-wise, this afternoon, a reminder for our confirmation students who are going through the affirmation of baptism. We'll be meeting with, pa with Bishop Tim Smith at 4 o'clock this afternoon on Zoom to talk about baptism with Bishop Smith. And then among our prayer concerns, for quite a while now, we have listed Charleston or Charlie Knox on our prayer list, a little girl who uh, was born with special needs and was not expected to live this long, but she is still continuing to live, but yet hospice has come into her home this weekend. So we lift up Charleston Knox and her, the Knox family, the Quaid family, and baptism-wise, I remember, I remember being able to celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism with her and her brothers, along with her family, here on May 25th, 2019. So, that sacrament of holy baptism is almost to be fulfilled, it sounds like, for Charleston Knox. We lift her and her family up in prayer as we celebrate the great gift of baptism now and forever. Amen. We continue with worship with the, sac the, small, sacrament, the small catechism of Martin Luther. When Luther said, what is baptism? And we respond, baptism is not simply plain water. Instead, it is water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. And what is this word of God? Where our Lord Jesus Christ says in Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what gifts or benefits does baptism grant? It brings about forgiveness of sins, redeems from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe it, as the words and promise of God declares.
of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. As Jesus was anointed with your Holy Spirit at baptism, fill us with your Spirit, that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you, David. David is our Congregation Council President for this year, 2021, and you'll be seeing other of our council members today through video, uh, through prayer, and through uh, this live streaming worship service. But at this time, it's my pleasure and privilege and responsibility to install them as council leaders for this calendar year. In addition to David, we also will install uh, Bill West as Vice President, Susan Balshan as Secretary, Bill Elkin as Treasurer. And these additional good servants who are working with committees and teams and task forces and overall uh, praying and serving and working with God and with us at St. Mark's, including Kathy Jo McLean, John Klein, Susan Uzarski, Jimmy Meadows, Mark Reidenauer, and Mark Relier. Dear Christian friends, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we are all called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the church in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do among us. It is our privilege to recognize and support these who are engaged in the work of this congregation in this particular way as congregation council leaders. Therefore, council members and leaders, you are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect God and Jesus Christ in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ at St. Mark's, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully serve on the congregation council in the name of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. And you, people of God at St. Mark's, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer in unison, yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. I therefore declare to you, council members, council leaders, that you are now duly installed for the life of this congregation for this calendar year 2021. God bless you with his Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we pray for, for St. Mark's Lutheran Church, for our council members of David, Susan, John, Jimmy, Mark, Kathy, Joe, Susan, Mark, and myself, and for our church staff, Carol, Robbie, Priscilla, Dawn, Johanna, pastors Dave and Vern, and for all our committees, volunteers, and servants here in this good church. May your Holy Spirit guide us with faithfulness and wisdom as we move forward into this new year for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Here ends the reading. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory, glory, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of heaven and earth. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God, our dwelling place in all generations. We give you thanks for the elders among us. We are graced by their wisdom and seasoning. We are touched by their knowledge and faith. Bless them, O God, as they are a blessing to us. Pour out your spirit that our elders may continue to dream dreams and testify to the Lord of their salvation. Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. I invite our boys and girls to come forward for our children's message. Boys and girls, what, what noises and what voices are you hearing today at your homes? If you've been watching and participating in worship with us so far, you've heard different voices You've heard several different voices, five or six different voices read or on video so far, and we don't sound the same, do we? Let me hear your voice. Go ahead and, and say, Pastor Dave. Now say, Pastor Vern. Thank you. It's great to hear your voices, boys and girls. We have big ears here, don't we? The voice of the Lord. Have you ever thought about what God's voice sounds like? The voice of the Lord. The reading that we just heard Allison read reminds us of how God's voice is so powerful. And the voice that we hear, heard in Genesis chapter 1 through Ethan's reading reminded us of how God spoke and the world came into being. How God spoke, let there be light. Can you say, let there be light? Let there be light. Here's a Bible verse for today, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that I want to share with you today and perhaps memorize it and use your own voice to proclaim Genesis 1, verse 1. It's, it's simple. In the beginning, can you say that? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Your turn. God created the heavens and the earth. And now we put both of those together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is a little bit like a scientist. God's a bit like an artist. God is a bit like a storyteller telling the story. God is, is creating the heavens and the earth, the satellites and the stars and the galaxies, including the Milky Way galaxy, all the way down to the protons and the neutrons and the electrons in a poetic sort of way. In a beautiful sort of way, using God's voice, and God likes to talk. How about, how about this? Alexa, play Stairway to Heaven. Anybody's Alexa start playing? It was, well, it was a try. We have smart houses these days, don't we? Where your phone or your computer or maybe your thermostat may, might pick up a voice that tells it to do something. Like even playing Stairway to Heaven. God spoke and the world came into being. And God's voice still speaks to us. Through men and through women, through boys and through girls, and pitches that are high and low, through, through organs and pianos and musicians and through song. Listen to God's voice when God's voice says, let there be light. Because sometimes we need light when it's really dark. And sometimes listen to God's voice when God says, my peace I give to you, because we need peace. 
and listen to God's voice when God says, your sins are forgiven. And listen to God's voice when you hear, this is my body and blood given for you. God's voice is so great, greater than the power of light, even from the sun. And God's voice is good. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your voice. Through your word, through the voices of your servants, the voices that we hear at home that help us to know you and to learn your word. Even how you created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. Be with us today. Help us to hear your good news word. Help us to follow in the promises of baptism. Help us to remember that you are with us always, even to the end of the age. And dear God, may your word bless these boys and girls in life, love, and faith. In the name of the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel today comes from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. John said, I have baptized you with water. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Will you please pray with me? Make us instruments of your grace, O oh God, through our thoughts, through our words, and through our actions. 
Let your presence and let your love be known. We pray these things in the name of Christ. Amen. Silence. Voices. Two words that have been heavy on my mind and in my heart this week. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German-born pastor, Lutheran, theologian, and teacher during the rise and power of the Nazi dictatorship. Bonhoeffer was a very vocal opponent of Hitler and the Third Reich. Throughout his ministry, he was eventually imprisoned, and later, in April of 1945, Bonhoeffer was hanged for his words. There are many works that we hear from Bonhoeffer, that we have to read from Bonhoeffer. In fact, one of my first classes in seminaries was dwelling on one of his books, Life Together. And one of those works that we can read today is entitled Letters and Papers from Prison. In this work, Bonhoeffer writes, We have been silent witnesses of evil deeds. Experience has made us suspicious of others and kept us from being truthful and open. Are we still of any use He asks, will our voices and our honesty find our way back to straightforwardness? Silence, voices, words heavy in my mind and in my heart this week. I remember where I was when 9-11 happened. I was in fifth grade. Yes, I'm a young sprout. My math teacher, Mrs. Fuller, had just taken me and my classmates to Mrs. Abbott's art class. We had just walked across the courtyard behind Gallman Elementary, down the steps to the rooms below the gym. And Mrs. Abbott had just given us instructions for what this week's art lesson would be. And it was then when a voice came over the intercom and the words were said for homeroom teachers to go and to collect your students. Soon after that announcement, Mrs. Fuller came back to Mrs. Abbott's art class and she picked up me and a couple other students. And we returned to her room. As we walked into Mrs. Fuller's door, the lights were off. The TV mounted in the front left corner of her room next to the gerbil cage was turned on. And there were two towering skyscrapers, one smoking as if it were on fire. We all went home from school early that day. I remember hearing the words of the news anchors that spoke. I remember the uneasy feeling, the pit in my stomach, the uncertainty of what I had just seen and heard. It was like the world was torn apart. Wednesday. As my eyes read the words that appeared on my iPhone screen, quote, protesters have successfully breached security at the nation's capital. That same feeling, like a pit, emerged in my stomach. I watched the news as windows were broken as flags that read 6MWE, which with a little research revealed the statement 6 million wasn't enough, pro 
holocaustic rhetoric were waived as offices and chambers of our nation's capital were raided and as news bulletins of gunshots were reported i watched the fallout of a nation that seemed to be torn apart I have to be vulnerable with you all for a little bit. I found myself questioning, how do I approach this Sunday? Here I am, proclaiming my first sermon in a new call, in a new place. I had anticipated on dwelling on the work of the Spirit in today's text and the work of the Spirit in our work together as this new adventure and ministry begins. The truth is, the Spirit is still at work, and there is much for us to be joyful about. I wrestled with, do I remain a silent witness in the words of Bonhoeffer? Do I speak honestly, giving voice to such a volatile topic in our society? Last week, we heard Pastor Dave as he talked about the importance of words, the importance of the word connected with John's gospel. Recall these words. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In this word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Words and the word are important again in today's texts. If we recall back to our reading from Genesis that Ethan shared with us just a little bit ago, we hear the first words of Scripture recalling creation, where God said, Let there be light. And there is. God speaks. God utters words. And creation takes shape from a formless void. The first words of Mark's gospel make the proclamation, This is the good news. These are the words of promise of Jesus Christ the Son of God. And we then continue in our gospel reading to hear about John the baptizer who set out through the Judean countryside as all the people of the Judean countryside and Jerusalem came to be baptized by him confessing their sin. As John proclaimed these words, he also proclaimed the words of the one more powerful than he who was coming into the world. The one who baptizes not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. And as John went about proclaiming these words of repentance, of confession, and of the promise of the one who is coming into the world, Jesus from Nazareth came to be baptized by John. Coming up out of the water after being baptized by John, Jesus sees the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove and a voice words from heaven proclaiming you Jesus are my son the beloved with you I am well pleased words and the word are important in today's text. There's another really important piece to today's texts as well. In addition to words and the word, 
this idea of the heavens torn apart. This is not the only time in Mark's gospel that we hear this phrase, torn apart. Looking ahead to Mark 15, we hear these words. It was about three o'clock, and from the cross, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last And the curtain of the temple was torn apart into from top to bottom. Torn from the safety and shelter of his mother's womb and born of Mary, God's word becomes truly human and lives among us. In his baptism, as the heavens were torn apart and the Spirit descended like a dove, words from heaven proclaimed, You, Jesus, are my Son, the Beloved, in you I am well pleased. Being betrayed by the ones he loves and in the pain of his body being torn apart in death on a cross and yet in love for the world. Jesus cried out, breathed his last and the curtain temple was torn apart. We are reminded again and again of Jesus, the word made flesh. God's incarnate love that is present in a torn apart world. And what does it mean for us to know that Jesus, the word of God, is present in places where the world seems torn apart? I return to one of my many conversations that I had this week as I discerned how and what I would proclaim today. I had a conversation with a cousin from Hickory this week, and I said to her, I pray that I find the right words to say. I'm going to name drop her. Lauren's response was, this is your calling. You are living your truth, and that is powerful. Her words of affirmation drew me back to the promises affirmed in my baptism and the promises that are affirmed in all of our baptisms. Those promises are to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people. Following the example of Jesus and to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Through the baptism of our Lord, we are reminded of God's love and presence here among us, in our lives, in the world, even when the world feels torn apart. And folks, our baptism calls us to live our truth. Through water and word, the Holy Spirit is stirred up in us. God calls us by name. Dave, Lauren, Robbie, Vern, you are my child, my beloved. Our baptism calls us to speak. Martin Luther once said, you are responsible not only for what you say, but also for what you do not say. 
through the promises of our baptism, we are called to speak and to act. In service, following the example of Jesus, we refrain from silence. We lift our voices. We use our words to speak for truth, for justice, and for love. We proclaim boldly the love that has been revealed to us through the words of creation, through the word made flesh, through Jesus, who tears into the brokenness of the world, bringing grace and peace. We remember the presence of our Lord revealed in his baptism and use our hearts, our hands, and our voices to strive for peace and justice in all the world, living out the promises of our baptism, pointing to the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, who redeems us and calls us through baptism to be ambassadors for love, not for violence or division. We are called to be voices echoing God's grace and God's presence that continually tears in to our world. And for that, thanks be to God. Amen.
baptized and set free. And as instruments of God's grace in the world, let us join our voices together, confessing the creed of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we call to mind before you all whom it is easy to forget, those who are homeless, destitute, sick, isolated, and all who have no one to care for them. As servants in Christ and as St. Mark's Lutheran Church, may we bring help and healing to those who are broken in body or spirit, that they may have comfort in sorrow, company in loneliness, food in hunger, and a place of safety and warmth in the name of one who was homeless and hungry, lonely at times, and suffered and died for us, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we lift before you our state, nation, and world. Bless our land with honesty in the workplace, honor in daily life, and stand watch over all who serve in our nation's military and their families. Save us from violence, discord, confusion, pride, arrogance, and every evil course of action. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Bless all leaders of the world with wisdom, understanding, faithfulness, and justice. And may your peace that passes all understanding be upon us all, Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, in your goodness, you provide faithful teachers for your church. By your Holy Spirit, give all teachers insight into your holy word and lives that are examples to us all. I pray that your blessing be on all our teachers and students who participate in the Christian education ministries of Sunday school, Bible study, vacation Bible school, preschool, and church camps whether they be in person or online. Watch over all faculty, staff, and students in our schools, colleges, and seminaries. Inspire their learnings, discoveries, and educational growth. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, you have poured out a large measure of earthly blessings. Our table is richly furnished. Our cup overflows. We give you thanks for all your blessings and for all the financial offerings and gifts St. Mark's experienced last year. As we begin 2021, remind us again to set our hearts on you and not on material blessings. Grant us wisdom to use our income, money, benefits, and blessings to your glory and may your Holy Spirit bless each household in our congregation with sufficient wealth and all the ministries with sufficient funds that we may be signs of your grace and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God of our ancestors, bless family life everywhere and fill all homes with respect, joy, laughter, patience, and prayer. Strengthen the commitment of husbands and wives to one another, that they may mirror your covenant faithfulness. Pour out your Holy Spirit on parents, that through them their children may experience your unconditional love. Bless children and youth with curiosity and creativity. Keep them from danger, order their steps, and guide their feet while they run the race of faith. In the name of Jesus and his holy family, 
including Mary and Joseph, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. O God of grace and glory, in Jesus show us how to live and work, in our work and in our volunteering, in our home life and in our church service. Guide us to be just and true in all our dealings, to be strict and conscientious in the discharge of every duty, pure and temperate in all enjoyment, gracious and generous and courteous toward all, so that in the mind of Christ Jesus may be formed in us all, may know that we are his disciples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for all these council members, for all of St. Mark's staff, for the St. Mark's congregation, all those who are worshiping and participating with us in ministry, life, love, faith, uh, through live stream and each and every day, living out their baptism, the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear now the prayers of our hearts, O God, that we lift up to you. your peace from heaven be granted upon your servants that we lift up today from our prayer list including Bobby, Dan, Sandy, Gail, Judy, Sarah, Charleston, all COVID-19 victims, families, medical workers, researchers for this vaccine and those who will be vaccinated in the days and weeks and months ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
and now gathered together as the body of Christ, let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may God the Creator strengthen you. May Jesus the Beloved fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.